All right, welcome back everyone. Okay, good. Everybody see that? All right, okay, good. If I'm too fast, please help me, tell me uh, to slow down and I will. All right, so where did we stop earlier? We stopped in, uh, we, we were looking at Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Am I correct? Genesis 1 verse 26. Let's look at it again. He said, uh, from verse 26, God said, let us make humans. Or let us make man. That when he talks about man, there, he's not talking about a gender specific man, like which, uh, like a man versus a woman. That's not what he's talking about. Let us make a human being. The word man there represents both male and female. He said, "Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have what dominion." Who was he talking to? He was talking to the Son and the Spirit. Is the Father who led the creation. Speaking to the the Son and the Spirit. He said, let us make man in our image. All right. And let them be like us. And we we'll give them. We, we will let them rule. To rule means to govern. Excuse me. The, to rule means to govern. To rule the fish, the birds, and all other living creatures. So man was made to rule. And this is the reason why man, remember purpose de precedes creation. Pur purpose dictates creation. So that is why man is given the kind of brain that he's given. He's given the kind of mind that is superior to that of the animal. Because he's supposed to govern them. He's supposed to direct them. He's supposed to manage them. So he's given a superior tool. Okay. Anybody who says we are the same as animals does not know. Uh, is That person is not speaking the truth. He does not know. He's an ignorant person. All right. Animals have some things that they do know. But man is way superior. Now, the, the state of the, of, of the fallen person the state of the fallen man has reduced or limited or dampened or toned down the potential of a, of a human mind. When I say the fallen man, I'm talking about the sinful nature of man, the sinful man. Because man fell into sin by choice, so the, the faculties are deemed, they are limited, they are reduced in capacity, in potential. Sin uh, corrupted the abilities that man has. All right. So the perceptions that we were given, the understanding we were given, uh, have all been made dull by sin. All right. But when you come to Christ Jesus, the scripture says that whoever is in Christ Jesus, in uh, first, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, whoever is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. He said, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new and all things are of God. So man's mind is restored back to what it was intended to be when you come to Christ. Because it's all things have passed away. The sin and its effect on man. The limitations, the corruptions, the, 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 the deadness, the, the sicknesses, the diseases. All the things are passed away. That is what the word of God says. And all things have become new and all things of God, including man's mind. All right. Now, he says, and let them have dominion over the fish, birds. That is the life, the sea life or water life, the life that occupies the air and over everything that is alive. Man is designed to manage them, to rule them. To govern them. All right. Wow. This is isn't that amazing? See how God has a responsibility God has given to us. Hmm. So when somebody says, Who are you? It's not it's not your name shouldn't come first. Your the intent of your creator should come first because that is how you who you are. All right. That is what makes you you. Okay, now let me say something too. Though we've been created by God, but 
the environment that we are being cultured, that we are growing, that we are planted to grow, is also impacting us, has, has great effect on us. All right? So the things that we are exposed to, the things that we have been through, things that we have experienced, all these things are still impacting us. So God has designed us, but our minds are being uh, conditioned. Remember your spirit. You can, God gave us the mind, though we are spirit beings, but God gave us the mind with which to relate to the earth. So to the degree to which your mind is trained and ex exposed and cultivated to that degree, your spirit can use your mind, can walk through your mind to fulfill God's intent on earth. Isn't that amazing? Now, someone say, maybe I have to go back to school. What is school? What is school? School is, it is, is a lifetime process. School is anywhere where you are that you are learning something that will enhance you. Amen? Anything that will enhance you. And enhance you in what way? Enhance you in line with the intent of the Creator. All right? So let's look at it again. So your cultural upbringing, your desires, your aspirations, ETC, all this, I mean, all the things that you go through. All right. When I say ETC, I meant etc. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So I want us to realize that the pains that you have been through, the scars that you have, your regrets, your victories, your successes, your the encouragement you've received, the criticism you've received, depending on how who you are and how you handle those kind of things, they are all contributing to redesigning your mind. All right, some people are still hugging like a darling the pains and the regrets of yesterday. Other people have been through the same pain and through this have reasons to hold on to regrets, but they moved away. They relocated from the area of pain and they are moving forward to the rising sun. It's all a choice. Some people hold on to a grudge, uh, they, they fail to forgive. That is, that is having an impact not only on your mind, but on your body. Can, how far can how fast can you go with a tent like like fifty pounds tied to your to your legs? A fifty pound weight tied to your legs. How far can you go? I mean, it's difficult. It's difficult. So uh, this is why when they say forgive, let it go. Let things go. They hurt you. Let it go. You've achieved success. Yes, move forward to a greater one. Somebody caused you pain. Yes, it's true. That person did badly. But move forward. And travel light. Don't carry baggages. Oh, my great, 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 great grandmother did this to me in 1910. And you're still holding on to it. Oh, when I was a kid, somebody did this, somebody did that, and I'm uh, you are still hand, ha, uh, holding on to it. You'll be you'll be delaying your progress. All right. Okay. So let's move forward. I, I'm here to just stay your mind. I don't want to give you all the details, but for you to remember that you've been created in the image of God. Okay. Number two, you have also uh, you are also being created. Uh, through the environment or by the environment that you live in, what you allow in, what you keep, what you let go of, everything that is going on around you is redesigning your mind. Okay? All right? It's recreating you, your, your expression. So let's look, look, uh, look at that. Consider that so that you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I know, yeah, I, I know some of you might have questions. If you want us to go deeper into this, it, please, we can do it privately. You have my number there. Call me, okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Call me. Yeah, all right. So now, number two is, where am I from? Where am I from? Uh -huh. Everything apart from God, everything descended from someone or something. God created us, our spirits, our human spirits, from himself, according to his own nature. So our spirits have the capacity to accommodate, to enjoy God, to relate with God, to have God's life. All right? And that is what Jesus does. When Jesus comes into someone's heart, Jesus brings the life of God and infuses it back. And the, the, the deadness, the sin, everything is flushed. In, that one is kicked out and that nature is totally removed. And the, the, the new nature is brought in and infused and, and brought into our spirits. Our spirits are recreated by the life of God. But the other question I want to ask you, where are you from? All right. All right. Where are you from? Nothing is self-created or remain in its original state. Everything evolves. I'm not talking about the evol evolution that the, you know, versus creation. That's not what I'm talking about. All right. The source of any product is the or is in is the is in the mind of the original creator. All right. So God is our source. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, he says, God said to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I'm your creator. Before and before you were formed or you were born, I chose you to speak for me to the nations. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew thee. And I have ordained you or appointed you to be my spokesperson, my prophet. All right. In the book of Psalm 138, verse 16, God's word says, Your eyes did see my substance, yet being uh, imperfect. And in your book, all my members were written, which, it, which is being formed, that is, the, my faculties were formed and fashioned by you. When I, when I didn't even exist, you knew me. That's what he's saying. So where are you from? Where are you from? Now, the environment also is, uh, like I say, some people are coming from a place of shame, a place of pain, a place of joy, a place of, of encouragement. So you are coming from somewhere and you are coming from somewhere with the impact that area has on you. Who are you? Sometimes it's good to ask um, people that are close to you, some to assess you, to define you, to talk to you heart to heart. And everybody needs to have, I want to encourage you, everyone here, to please find a good friend who would be straight up with you and you won't get upset. If you don't have a good objective critic in your life, you, uh, it's good to have one. It's good to have one. It's good, very good to have one. All right. Okay. Now, I'm going to touch this briefly and then I won't, then we can take, take another break. Where am I from? So, number one is who am I? All right. Uh, sorry. Uh, number one is who am I? Where am I from? The number three that I want us to touch briefly is why, why, where, <laughs> where am I? Where am I? Praise God. Or why am I here? You can put it the same way too. It means the same thing. Why am I here? This is a very crucial point. Your intent determines pre predicted where you are. Now, your, the intent of God's mind is what I meant. The intent of the manufacturer's mind is what dictated the environment that he has placed you. Sometimes we'll wander off. 
And when we wander, that is why we, we create stress and life is full of stress until we come back into a lane, into the right lane. So why am I here? What am, why am I here? Why am I here? Is a third question that I like you to uh, look into. Why am I here? Now, where is your here? Before you say, why am I here? What is here? And where is your here? That is space. Space. What opportunities, what resources, what challenges are in your here? Here in quote, the environment where you are right now, the place, the, the, the space you're occupying right now. What are the opportunities? What are the challenges? What are the aspirations? What are the resources that you have right there? Some people are so focused on that, on over there, that they do not pay attention to here. But remember, I want to tell you something. God's goal includes your here. God's goal includes your here. Your here or your space is an environment designed for you. Some people say, I, go, I got a job, but I happen to be the only in the middle of, I'm, I'm the only one who is a believer in the, a company or our office. We're about 20 something or 30 something, but I'm the only believer. I want to leave. I want to find another job to be among believers, a good environment. No, you don't know why, where, what your here is. You don't know if you really understand who you are, where you are from, then you will appreciate where you are. A candle is not needed at noonday with the sun high up in the sky. A candle is useless. If God play, has placed you among unbelievers, then that means light, some light is needed there. Ah, oh, I'm the only, I'm the only believer in, in our subdivision. I'm the only believer in this. I'm the only one in the, I'm the only one who can do this. I'm the only, it's not just about even spiritual things. But maybe I'm the only, uh, maybe a black person in this environment. I'm the only white person in that environment. I'm the only, the, if people look at different things and say, I'm the only, I'm the only. Then be, be grateful to God for being the only. People abuse their space or their here because they do not know who they are and where they are from. You will continue to abuse and misuse what your space, your environment, your here, when you don't know who you are and where you are from. If you don't know where you are, you wouldn't be you wouldn't be able to determine what you are there for, and you will waste resources and waste your life. So, in other words, in other words, we need to find out how do I accomplish what I'm here for? Why am I here? Why, how do I accomplish what I am here for? Why am I here? Why am I in the military? Why am I still in school? Why am I married? Why am I part of this family? Why am I these and that? Ask and let the Lord help you. Okay, we're going to take a break and we can continue again uh, when we come together. 15 minutes break, okay? God bless you. Thank you. Yeah, keep your questions. We can ask them after. All right. Or you can email me straight away or send me a text message. All right. See ya.